Hi guys, welcome to Core 2. Core 2 is all about performance. We'll kick this core off with critical question 1. How does training affect performance? In this video, we'll be exploring Core 2, question 1, dot point 1. If you look at the syllabus, you can see this dot point is about the body's energy systems. In this video, we will learn about the ATP system, the lactic acid system, and the aerobic system. For each of these systems, we will explore the source of fuel, the efficiency of ATP production, the duration that the system can operate, the cause of fatigue, the byproducts of energy production, and the process and rate of recovery. But before we do, let's take a brief look at energy. The body requires energy in order for it to survive. The body requires energy to breathe, to keep the heart beating and to keep the brain functioning. If there is no energy intake, then the body will die. Energy is measured by kilojoules and the body will require a certain amount of kilojoules to allow it to function. Some countries like America will measure energy in calories, but in Australia and in the HSC, we use the term kilojoules. When sleeping, you may burn three to six kilojoules per minute, when exercising, you may burn anywhere between 18 to over 50 kilojoules per minute. So we get this energy from food. And food can be broken down into three elements. Carbohydrates, fats, and protein. Each of these elements will contain a different amount of kilojoules. For instance, for each one gram of carbohydrate, there will be 16 kilojoules. For each one gram of fat, there will be 37 kilojoules. And for each one gram of protein, there will be 17 kilojoules. That information will be especially important in critical question three, how can nutrition and recovery strategies affect performance? Now let's link this information about energy to performance. The body requires energy to initiate movement, right? Energy is released from chemical compounds into the muscle cells when movement is required. This chemical compound is called adenosine triphosphate, otherwise known as ATP. ATP is made up of two types of molecules, adenosine and three phosphates. The ATP compound stores energy within its bonds. Energy is then released when the connection between the last two phosphates is broken. This release of energy makes movement possible. However, now ATP has only two phosphate molecules. It is now called ADP, adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two. Even though our body has a certain amount of ATP to use, it doesn't mean once it's used, that's it. ADP will rebuild to become ATP again. The rebuilding of ADP molecule back to ATP is called resynthesis. This occurs when a free phosphate rejoins ADP, reinstating the bonds, making it ATP again, and therefore able to release energy to the muscles once again. So our body has three systems that can allow energy to be released to initiate movement. These three energy systems are the ATP system, the lactic acid system, and the aerobic system. The body will only use one system at a time and the system the body uses will depend on the intensity of the movement as well as the duration of the activity. It is important to note that the ATP PC system and lactic acid system do not require the presence of oxygen, whilst the aerobic system does require the presence of oxygen to resynthesize ATP. Let's start the dot point by looking at these three energy systems in detail. So first, let's look at the ATP system. The ATP PC system is used for high intensity, short duration activities. For example, long jump. The source of fuel. As previously mentioned, there is only a certain amount of ATP in our body. When the body uses the ATP system to release energy, it cannot resynthesize it quick enough to keep the supply going. So just like on a motorbike that has reserve fuel, the body has a reserve called creatine phosphate. 
When the compound creatine phosphate splits into two molecules, that too releases energy. Therefore, the source of fuel for this energy system is creatine phosphate.